Okay, review of the broader markets here on May 19th. It's uh, about 9.30 right now, 9.30 p.m., excuse me, Eastern Time. And so the futures have been trading for about three and a half hours now. We'll start with IWM. It's the it's the uh, ETF for the Russell 2000. And this is a weekly chart. And you'll remember, so from my previous video, you'll see it in the description, a, a link. I marked that this level here, that 180.269. If we were able to get above that level on the weekly chart, this is a weekly chart, that would give us a weekly swing low, right? We would have a swing low above this low here. And notice, we we got just about right to that level and failed, right? You can see this upper wick. That always means it's a pullback on a lower time frame. And we'll look at the daily to review that. And so this was week 12. It is still technically an inside week. It didn't make a new high. Still hasn't made a new low. Maybe we get there by the end of this week. I guess we'll see. But this, to me, is clear evidence that we just got our lower high, like this was probably our lower high, and now we're going to make another lower low. And so this huge lower low, this whole thing, this whole thing, which is a lower low of all this, is just like this might have been its l lower high, right? And now it's going to make another lower low, and then a lower high, and then a lower low, um, and then like kind of work its way down. Again, definitely getting below this gap. Uh, we're, we're not out of the woods yet on that by any means. And so, again, this is week 12. You can imagine the daily cycle doesn't end until, you know, week 20, 25. And so that puts you well into June, estimating the week of June 11th here, for instance. Looking at the daily cycle to kind of zoom in, get a little bit more tactical. The high was day three. Yesterday was day four. Today, well, today, you know, Thursday is day five. So Friday will be day six, the way we'll close out the week. So we did close out the day green but definitely a pullback. You can see this is a pullback in the lower time frame. And this is this is your rejection, right? Like that upper wick, that's this candle here. That's how you start to understand how the different time frames work together, right? This big red candle here on the daily yesterday on, on Wednesday is what caused the upper wick on that weekly candle after we almost made a new high, you know, on, on, on uh, Tuesday. So that's important to understand how that kind of works. We came up here and then kind of failed. That said, we still haven't made a new low, and so we'll, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. The monthly, we're on month 26, it would seem. Declining since November, not a good look. And so to recap, I thought we were going to make, you know, maybe get to like day 8, 12 even. And we can still do that, like right? Like this is going to potentially be a swing low. So just, just to put a finer point on it, above 178.85 gives us a daily swing low. So if we can trade above 179, call it, on Friday, that gives us a swing low on IWM. And it's actually, sorry, I'll, I'll zoom in here. It's actually a higher low, right? Because we come up here, we make a higher high. That's a low. If we are able to hold that low and make a high above here, this becomes a higher low. And then this would need to make a higher high above 182.69. That's how you start to understand price action, you know, at a more specific level. But it is, again, interesting. Notice this, again, failed right at this level. These levels matter. Understanding the open, high, low, close uh, at different time frames. That's the key. And so now we'll move on to uh, QQQ. Same situation here, except, my God, look at that weekly candle. We've almost already made a weekly new weekly low. I mean, you can tell, like, that. that's a big difference between the weekly candle on IWM and the one on, on and this one here. This one has almost already made a new low. And so if we look at the daily, same kind of picture, you know, Thursday, I'll zoom in here, was day five. Top so far has been day three. So this one... It looks like it it's not going to make it back to the day three high, right? Which would be 306.67. I mean, we'll see. But like this upper wick, this does not bode well by any means. Um, and, you know, the weekly, again, doesn't look much better. That's week nine, which means we're still relatively early in the weekly cycle. So a lot of time to decline. And it looks like, you know, we're not going to get too much upside from this daily cycle. And this is the SPX. Same look to it. Big, really bearish upper wick. This is really kind of a, you know, a shooter candle, if nothing else. Um, and really an ugly trading day because it went all the way up here 
and went all the way down here and then closed right here kind of did nothing so this is setting up a nice short i think is the is kind of the gist of it um, and if i actually go to the futures because you know they're trading now see so the futures are have almost printed a swing low right so the futures are going to be slightly different levels in spx to be to be to be clear but above 39.46.50 on the futures, the June contract would actually give you a swing low on on the S&P futures. But then you'd need to get above 40.99.75 to really make a another higher high, right? You need to get above here, so you could still get above here and then chop around around here. And you can see the 10-day moving average is right here. What I will say is this is setting up. Like you could see a situation where we chop around here for a little bit, then poke our head up here, and then we just collapse further. It's kind of like what happened here, right? So we went down a little bit, came up, double top, and then came went lower, right? Like this kind of situation. We come up here, we go down, we test it again, and then we go lower. So this is this is definitely setting up for some bearish action is my anticipation.